Good afternoon. I'm uh, Ron Tochi, and uh, I have the privilege of uh, serving the veterans in this particular community, and I'm very, very proud that uh, I could be part of that. Um, I uh, want to, uh, first of all, thank everyone for being here today, and uh, we're going to start our program by uh, the presentation of our colors, which would be conducted by the Westchester County Police Ceremonial Unit, and uh, if I can, um, ask them to uh, present the colors, please. Please remain standing. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance led by our county commander, uh, Fred Wooding. Commander. Thank you, Ron. Uncover, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Remain standing. Our invocation will be by Dr. Lindsay DeGarmo, pastor, Katona Presbyterian Church. Pastor. Let us pray. O oh, Holy One, we gather this afternoon to honor American veterans worthy men and women who gave their best, and in some cases their all, when they were called upon to serve and protect our country. We pray that you will bless them for their unselfish service in the continual struggle to preserve our freedoms, our safety, and our national heritage for all of us. Bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they made, and for their many different contributions to America's victories over tyranny and oppression. May they be ever confident of the gratitude, respect, and pride with which their fellow citizens regard them. Watch over these heroes and grant that they may live out their days in peace and happiness. Amen. 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 Everyone could be seated, please. In deference to our county executive who has a very, very busy schedule, I'd like to bring him up for special remarks on this special day. George, if you would. Thank you very much, and I'd like to recognize uh, Ron Tochi, who heads up our veteran affairs here in Westchester County for the outstanding work he's been doing over many, many years. Thank you, Ron. Let me also recognize some of my colleagues in government elected office who are here today. We're joined by two members of the Westchester County Board of Legislators, perhaps as the third or fourth one that I can't see in my eye shot. But uh, James Nolan of Yonkers is with us, Legislator Nolan. And Legislator Erica Lang Pierce of Bedford is also with us today. We have with us a member of the New York State Assembly, freshly reelected in the last 24 hours, Christopher Burdick. Chris? We also have with us a man who's doing double duty. He uh, has duty as the mayor of the village of Rye Brook and also one of the uh, senior executives of our Parks and Recreation Conservation Department, Jason Klein. My uh, colleague, uh, the deputy county executive, Ken Jenkins, is with us. And I'd like to also uh, introduce a newly minted elected official. She is uh, a state Supreme Court justice elect the Honorable Kerry Fiore. 
and we're very pleased that, that all of our colleagues in government can be here for this special day. We are holding this two days in advance of Veterans Day because it is important for the county to recognize the role of all the veterans. But it's also important for us, I think, to recognize that all of our communities are going to have uh, veteran services over the course of uh, Friday, which is Veterans Day. And since it's traditionally 11 o'clock on the 11th day of the 11th month, uh, all of those communities fit at that time frame, so we thought it was respectful for us to honor veterans at the county level at an alternate time, uh, and this was Ron's uh, uh, suggestion and idea, so that uh, we would still have those municipal uh, reflections at that time, and we think that's important. We want the largest number of people possible to come and attend uh, these types of services. Just a few very brief thoughts. Um, when we honor all of our veterans on Veterans Day, we're really honoring um, the American citizen the American individual, because our military has historically, uh, certainly during the great wars that we've experienced in our, in our history, have been a function of everyday individuals who have stepped up to volunteer or be drafted into military service. We now have an all-volunteer army, which means that uh, they chose voluntarily. They weren't drafted, but they chose voluntary life in the military. It's very different. You, do, you know your history of the world. Uh, the, uh, the men who fought on behalf of the Roman Empire were specially uh, identified for that purpose and uh, became part of an elite corps that spent their lives doing that purposely for that purpose. And yet the story of uh, World War II, the story of World War I, the story of the Civil War, the story of the Revolutionary War, and in between the Spanish-American War, the Korean War, Vietnam War, all of these actions were average individuals, young men and in some cases now young women as well, who were working, living lives as young people and who were asked by their country to serve or, or upon Pearl Harbor decided that their country needed their services and they volunteered and they went to distant sp uh, parts of the world, all across the world, places that you wouldn't think to travel to for any other reason and put themselves in harm's way. But every single person that served as a veteran served this nation, peacetime or wartime. And to some extent, when a war didn't break out, it didn't mean that a war wasn't imminent. If you were in the naval services and you were on ships that were in the Atlantic water during the period of the Cuban Missile Crisis 60 years ago, it didn't turn into a shooting war, but it could have. And when you were on board those ships at any moment in time, war might have broken out between the United States and the Soviet Union. And, and there was that potential. If you were policing the, the, the demilitarized zone in Korea for any of the number of years after 1953, or if you were in West Berlin and you were at the, the Berlin Wall, hostilities did not break out. But if you remember the military, you were potentially at any moment in time called upon to put your life on the line. And these people have served. And I would say the most obvious thing, how many of you have served in the military? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Keep it raised. Every one of these folks went through 13 weeks of basic training. Everybody who didn't raise their hand, how many of you volunteered to do that? You know? Did you see an officer and a gentleman? Did that, did that motivate you more or less? So, so every person that served in this country uh, in the military, we owe a great debt of gratitude. It's important also, I think, and this is my final comment on this, is to understand a concept that may have slipped away from us as Americans, and that's the concept of sacrifice. We, uh, as a country, have great economic um, strength. We have a difficult time right now in terms of the economy. We have other issues that make it difficult. We have our divisions in our thinking. But we basically have a great country, a great and, and abundant country, where we don't lack the most, most of us for, for the necessities of life and, the, and many times the luxuries of life that are made available to people of modest income in ways that they're not made around the world. And we have gone so long since the sacrifice of uh, World War II, which was universal sacrifice, and even the Vietnam War, which was drafting selective service, but significant part of the society, that we've forgotten what it's like to weigh the other portion of citizenship. With citizenship, we have rights. We also have responsibilities. And the men and women who've served in our country have understood that and have honored that. And they made a sacrifice. And that sacrifice sometimes is passed by as we're busy just living our lives. We enjoy our lives. You know, it's an NFL Sunday. It's a beautiful day to go out and walk uh, in the woods, Wh whatever our pursuits may be. These things are ours today because of the sacrifice of every man and woman that put the uniform of this country on. And let us remember that the uniform back in the days of the Revolutionary War was not a beautiful, well-sculpted uniform. 
It was whatever that patriot had and, and went to war and, and traveled on foot long distances to, to give us the initial freedom that, uh, that we built this country on. And uh, that sacrifice is not over. There are other ways that we have to sacrifice. It may not be militarily. It may be the sacrifice that we make economically. It may be the sacrifice that we make when we can't do exactly what we want to do at the time we want to do it because there is some greater need or some greater thought that, that has to be addressed. Uh, our veterans understand the sacrifice, and that's why we remember them, not just Veterans Day, Memorial Day, there's Pearl Harbor Day coming up, there's Flag Day in June, there's Gold Mother's Day. Even if you add up all those particular ceremonies, they don't add up to 30 days worth of sacrifice, uh, 30 days worth of recognition. But their sacrifice was 365 days. And we respect that and we thank you for that sacrifice. And Ron, thank you for pulling this together with all of these wonderful people. Ken Jenkins will continue on in my place as I have to leave, but uh, I'm here in spirit and heart. Thank you. Thank you, George, for uh, recognizing uh, the need for actually uh, admitting about uh, how much sacrifice goes into making uh, our country and our nation and this community what it is and allowing us to do this today. This may be a, a special ceremony. I don't know of any other in the area, including the counties, that do something like this, but to get everyone together from different communities throughout our community and to recognize this day as a special day. You know, I've often said as uh, the Veteran Service uh, Director that uh, I have the most important job in the county, and I truly believe that. Um, what could be better and more gratifying than taking care of those people who take care of us? Ever since the inception of our nation, it's always been that uh, warrior who uh, was a true patriot. And we've had millions of people who have served in the military, and it's not just the warrior. It's the families that serve with them, the wives, the sons, the daughters, and everyone that goes with it. Uh, from the beginning of the Revolutionary War to the current time, it's been our military that's always been the sustaining force that keeps our nation uh, and it keeps it glued together. There's so much talk and rhetoric and chaos going on, especially around the election periods, uh, this may be unique to some people, but if you read our history and you go back to Andrew Jackson and even others, there's always been this uh, kind of controversy and turmoil. But our nation has always stayed together. And to talk about our democracy failing, I don't want to buy that. Uh, there's no question that our military learned from their experiences as they liberated so many nations around the world from totalitarianism that they would never allow that to happen, and it never will happen in this country. I can assure you of that from dealing with all these special heroes that serve our nation in uniform. So we should uh, be very, very proud of the fact that we survive even after all the rhetoric and all of the uh, challenges and all the court battles. Uh, we go through that. We don't have revolutions where we have our military shooting people on the street. So with that said, I'm very, very happy that uh, I'm part of this nation, and we should all be grateful uh, to the good Lord that, that we were born or we migrated here, and uh, we are going to sustain not only this nation but the world because of our beliefs that all men are created equal, and they're all in, endowed with uh, the, the Creator, endowed by the Creator for uh, everything that goes with being free. So anyway, um, I uh, wanted to... Uh, I introduce some special people. Uh, I have um, the privilege of being a legionnaire. I've been a legionnaire for 52 years, and in many, many ways I've worked with them to accomplish a lot. The American Legion is the <coughs> premier organization, veteran advo advocacy uh, throughout the nation, throughout the world for that matter. And after World War uh, I, it was determined that there had to be uh, some kind of a group that would fight for the rights of these veterans and their needs. And Teddy Roosevelt Jr., along with people like Hamilton Fish and other great people, conceived the idea of the American Legion. And they have proven themselves uh, to be the chief advocates for everything that a veteran family might need after wars. And uh, picking up on the, uh, on, the, on the famous words of George Washington, who suggested in his uh, farewell address 
that the willingness of future generations to serve in time of war, no matter how justified, is is proportionately related to the way they perceive how we treat the veterans of the prior wars. George Washington was uh, truly a psychologist as well as a great leader, general, president, and uh, strategist, you name it. But at the same time, he understood very clearly that the people have to understand that, God forbid, something happens to you while you're fighting for our nation. Uh, you want your families protected and taken care of as well as yourself. So today, the American Legion leads the fight throughout the country, in Congress, in the halls of all the state legislatures. And I remember very, very vividly working with them for all the years I served in Albany. And I was proud to be the chair and to be part of that great organization. Today we have with us a special guest, newly installed commander of the State Department of the American Legion. And uh, I'm going to ask him to come up and say a few words. And uh, that is uh, Dave Riley. He's our commander now. He's a United States Air Force veteran, current American Legion Department, State of New York. Commander. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate it very much. Good afternoon. Veterans Day is about honoring all the men and women who have served in the United States military. Many serve their communities as first responders, teachers, healthcare workers, or church leaders. Some are business owners, farmers, company workers, or retirees. But they are bound by one common commitment, to defend America with their life if called upon. Military service is not for the faint of heart. Most civilian jobs do not require a risk to life or limb. Too often, however, the risk doesn't end when the service members take off the uniforms to become civilians again. Transitional challenges to stress of military life and the feeling of isolation all factors into a suicide rate among veterans that is more than 50% higher than that of non-veteran adults. The stigma of seeking help needs to end. Veterans value courage, and it takes courage to ask for help. We must be proactive. Ask and encourage veterans to seek help before they pass a point of no return. The bonds that, the bonds that we formed in the military are unlike any other. A good American Legion post fosters an environment that helps continuing such bonds and creates new ones. Very few of us are trained as counselors or mental health professionals but we are capable of listening, referring, and following up. The National Crisis Line still works, but now there is even a shorter number. It is 988 and press 1. Most kindergartners know what 911 is for. It is up to us to ensure that 988 becomes just as widely known. By calling 988 now, we can prevent a 911 call later. The American Legion is also, has been, also has a Be The One website for suicide prevention. It is www.bethone.org. Learn from it. Spread the word about it. Homelessness is another tragic outcome that is too often connected to military service. It is estimated that America has 60,000 veterans who are homeless. Though veterans compromise approximately 7% of the U.S. population, they are 11% of our nation's homeless. The best way to prevent a veteran from becoming homeless is to hire one. It is not only good policy, but it is smart business for an employer who values skill, discipline, and patriotism. When politicians lament the cost of a veteran's program, it is up to us to remind them of the cost of being a veteran. Whether it's exposure to burn pits or other toxins, Many veterans today continue to pay a high price for their military service. We need to ensure that access to high quality health care and benefits reflecting the thanks of a great nation. 104 years ago, on November 11, 1918, the guns of the world fell silent. An armistice was signed and the Great War was over. Unfortunately, World War I was not the war to end all wars, as many had hoped. While we rejoice and honor the American veterans, we also remember the wise words of General Douglas MacArthur. 
The soldier, above all other people, pray for peace. Thank you. Thank you, Commander. That was great. Uh, we also have people that I want to recognize that are here today. Um, we have um, the American Legion is composed of a family of service people. That includes the auxiliary, and it also includes the Sons of the Legion and the writers, the Legion writers. And they all have special uh, parts that they play. Uh, we have with us today Nancy Babis, president of the American Legion Auxiliary Department. She, she is a 62-year member of the American Legion Auxiliary B. Leo Dolan Unit Number 410 of Lockport, and uh, whose mother Joyce was also a United States Coast Guard veteran, and her father Ralph, a United States veteran, both of World War II, and Nancy's husband John was a Navy veteran serving during the Vietnam era. God bless you. God bless you. Um, I think uh, it's appropriate also to uh, acknowledge the fact that here in Westchester County, we have a very active uh, legion, and um, we have with us our county commander, Fred Wooding, and I'm going to ask Fred to speak, speak for a few minutes anyway. Okay, here we go. Can't see a damn thing without these. County Executive Latimer, American Legion Department, Commander Riley, county officials, Legion comrades, and our many constituents and friends. We share today this opportunity to recall our fellow veterans, those who are called to duty for our nation, and those shared experiences and their sacrifices made have led to a nation yet enduring and so as Westchester County Commander for the American Legion Department of New York, I take this moment to thank each of you for your recognition and pray you remember those sacrifices and share and serve. Thank you for coming and have a wonderful day. Also with us that we want to recognize would be uh, uh, Timothy Van Patten, the second Detachment Commander of New York Sons of the American Legion. Uh, Tim, there you go. Um, he was, uh, his father, Timothy, was a past department commander and a United States Navy veteran whose family line of service include both his grandfather and his great, great grandfather going back to World War I. God bless them all. God bless your family. We uh, also, I notice in the audience, we have um, Kathy O'Connor, our Commissioner of Parks and Recreation, who helps make this uh, possible every year. Kathy, thank you so much. Um, anyway, uh, we also uh, recognize today as the birthday of the United States Marine Corps, and a Marine who's also one of our commissioners and directors here in the county, uh, James Massano. Jimmy, where are you? Okay, thank you. Anyway, um, I am delighted to be able to participate with so many special heroes. And uh, not least, not last, but not least, certainly, uh, all the veterans that are here today. Um, you should all be very, very proud of the fact that you're part of this community where people do recognize and acknowledge all the services and sacrifices that we make. Understand clearly that uh, nobody gets paid in our county for doing these services uh, as commander, vice commander, department commanders, and so on and so forth. This is all because we really believe in the, uh, the credo of America. Uh, liberty and freedom, justice, it's not just for us, it's for the world. And understand very clearly that our military has liberated more people around the world than all the other countries put together. So we should be proud Americans. And we just went through a very difficult election with a lot of diverse opinions and ideas about what's right for our nation. And uh, we found out that every state has their own kind of ideas. Uh, there are some that uh, had tsunamis one way or the other, and uh, that's what we live with. We're in America. Everybody has the right to their own opinion, 
and uh, we live with it. So God bless all of you. I'm going to uh, conclude our services uh, by asking everyone to stand while we uh, do a, uh, a rifle salute uh, by uh, post um, Sam Dorenzo, VFW Post 2285. Reverend, if you want to give us a benediction prayer, more than welcome. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. That just about concludes our program for today. I just want to leave this one thought with everyone. Uh, if you know of a veteran or you know of a veteran family that served, uh, if we have any obligation, it is to pass on to the future generations the passion for patriotism, to make them understand what it means to be a veteran, why we fought when we did, and why we sacrificed. That's to sustain this nation and its philosophy that was uh, endowed by the Creator to make sure that we are the light of the world. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for coming.